Hey there, welcome to my tutorial about how to draw or paint pine trees. I can tell you I had a lot of fun practicing these and hope you will too when you make your own artwork. In particular I'm going to focus on Scots pine trees, or in Latin Pinus silvestris. However, what you learn in this video can also be useful for other kinds of pine trees. You just have to make some slight adjustments. Alright, let's start with the sketch. The trunk is normally going straight up like so, and it's not too thick. And we just let it go narrower and narrower as we get to the top. Then you can decide to add here and there some extra branches, like the main branches you want to have in there. But for the most part, it is already done. You don't have to add more details than that. Here's the sketch that I prepared beforehand and it's not very different from the previous one. Pine trees come in all sorts of shapes. Their height can be really enormous with their foliage starting only at the very top. Their trunk can be also very warpy looking for different species. In general, you have a lot of freedom when painting them and this is what it makes it so enjoyable for me. Let's keep on going and I have a brush here that is very rough, kind of chalk-like, because this will be on a layer that is not going to be erased different from the sketch here. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm sketching out a bunch of leaf clusters, or well, needle clusters because they have needles. Now what are these clusters? Well, the leaves, or the needles, are normally not distributed evenly, but grouped together in these clusters carried by individual branches. In order to imitate kind of the shape in which they come, I am doing this like up and down zigzag movement. I apply only very light pressure because this is going to be just kind of a sketch. The sizes and the shapes vary a lot. In general the shapes are more wide than tall and you can have like small little clusters or quite large ones like over here at the bottom. And you kind of want to group together a bunch of these clusters to a big group of clusters. These groups are mostly carried by the main branches, those big ones and you can drop them very randomly, like here and there. I can decide, okay, here is also going to be one. And here we already sketched out one. And you can just drop it in wherever you want. And this is so exciting and really cool. I like it a lot because you can shape it in so many different ways, kind of make it asymmetrical, make it more dense or more kind of scars. It is completely up to you. Now you see that I'm using a very dark color, and well, let me talk about that a little bit. In general I advise you when you paint trees that you start with either the darkest or the brightest one and work yourself towards the other direction. It also depends on the tools you're using. For example with watercolors, colored pencils, pastel chalks, normally the darker color are more dominant and therefore you should start with the brighter ones. However with oil paints for example you have the possibility of making the brighter color stick to the darker one. And of course it is completely up to you when you use digital tools. I personally like to start with the darkest color because for me it is easier to get the shapes and the general brightness right that I want to achieve. However if you want or have to start with the brightest color you can still apply all the techniques that I show you. You just have to revert some orders but it is not too complicated so I know you can do it. And so let me actually switch over to the version that I have already prepared. And in general this is how this tutorial will go. I have the steps already prepared beforehand and I explain and demonstrate all the in-between stuff, all the techniques and knowledge you need to know. Another thing that I want to mention is that I paint these leaves on just one singular layer. I don't want to make a tutorial which is just mainly useful for people who use digital tools, but for everybody. So next up we have to think about where the light comes from. In our case we're going to say that the light comes from the upper left and slightly from the front. Therefore, the bottom right parts will be the darkest. Since these groups of leaf clusters hang around quite freely and there are a lot of space in between those, they don't block too much of sunlight for each other. Therefore, we don't have to worry too much about making those that are in the background darker. Now the tool that I want to use next is this one here, which kind of imitates the shape of leaves. This brush can be very light and also is able to mix color which is already existing on the layer. Therefore I'm getting even closer to the feel of traditional tools. As for the strokes we want to use, we for the most part do this kind of like up and down movement. Don't just go ahead and make it one directional, but bring in some variation to it. You could even give it some curvature. But you also want to do some slight circular movements or some taps here and there in order to give it more random directions and texture. 
And so what we do is simply filling out the shapes that we sketched out beforehand. Don't make it too dense for the most part, especially around the corners which are facing the sun. And this is just basically how it goes. You vary it a lot, especially here at the top, you want to have the leaves reach upwards. While here at the bottom, it is more random and you can do more circular movements. And when you do this, it will end up like this. Go ahead and don't limit yourself to the shapes that you sketched up beforehand. It's just more of a guideline. Go ahead and drop in some extra little details. Give the clusters a more shape, more random shape. It is completely up to you what you want to do after all. And then we want to use the next color. But speaking of, let me also talk about my palette. I start with a very dark green and then work myself up towards a medium bright kind of grayish yellow. You can see that there is not that much of an increase in terms of brightness. The needles are after all very dark. And since we only have this small range, we don't need that many steps in between. For example, this step here is actually completely unnecessary because you can see that the increase is so small we wouldn't even see it on our canvas. And therefore I'm skipping it and just go to this medium one. And what I'm doing is I increase the density and add more lighter areas. I especially want to focus more on the left sides and the top parts of the clusters. But we also want to drop in here and there some random little details. So we just straight up also paint into the darkest areas. And of course we want to add some little extra details here and there. And just go ahead and drop in these floating leaves that are not really connected to anything. It doesn't matter, it doesn't need to be. And as for the clusters, make sure that you don't completely destroy the light and shadow areas. And so in the end it will look something like this. You can see I increased the density and the size of the clusters quite significantly. And with every step I add more and more little details. It can be done very quickly and makes your tree so much more special looking. And this is basically how it goes. We have the next brightest color or darkest color, depends on which direction you have to go. And you add more little details and more lighter areas. As we go to the bright and bright areas, we limit ourselves more to the uh, brightest spots on the leaf clusters. But still, again, go ahead and drop in some extra details, some random details, even in the darkest areas. And then it will look something like this. And let's go ahead and use the brightest color now. And because of the yellow, it looks so much warmer. You can achieve a lot of different effects simply by choosing your colors. With a warm color like yellow, you can make the tree look like it's standing outside in the warm, bright sun. And go ahead and make your details now very, very fine. You want to have some very sp almost sparkly looking bright areas, some highlights on top of these clusters. And then it can look somehow like that. Now finally we're adding the wood part of the tree. For that you could go ahead and use the same brush as before or use another one which is much more dense. But either way you have to make sure that the trunk and the branches are very opaque and very dense. You don't just draw it like this and be done with it. This is not enough. So drop in a lot of thick color. And when you get closer to the leaf clusters, we didn't really define beforehand which ones are going to be in the foreground and which ones are in the background. So I can just go ahead and say, all right, this one's gonna be in the background and just paint over it, just like that. And now we get to the next part and this one is going to be in the foreground. So what we have to do is we just lightly tap closer and closer and a little bit into it and make the trunk kind of fade out very slightly. And this way we can still retain and save the shape of the leaf clusters. And on the other side it will point out again and connect with the rest of the tree. And we also want to have the bigger branches growing to the side and just make sure that all of the leaf clusters are held by branches, by big strong branches. You can go ahead and give your branches a lot of curvature and in general you want to have the branches, the smaller branches reach upwards in order to give their leaves a chance to get as much sunlight as possible. They're kind of competing with each other. So the bigger branch is just curving to the side or even slightly downwards. Maybe it's pulled down by gravity. But then the lighter, the smaller ones are reaching up as high as they can and carry those leaf clusters. And here and there you drop in some fine little branches 
but for the most part these ones are going to be hidden by the leaves. I forgot to mention that the color that we're using is a very dark red, like a dark red brown. And well, as for the shape of the branches, they can be quite curvy, almost kind of warpy looking. And we want to have them go thinner and thinner, at least for the main branches that are actually carrying leaves. What are we doing with that, we will see later. And let me actually switch over to the prepared version, because it looks so much better. I am not very good at drawing live. One additional advice that I want to give you is, don't overdo it with the number of branches. In nature, these trees can have hundreds and hundreds of branches. However, if you are trying to achieve that in your drawing or painting, it can make it so overwhelming and confusing looking. It requires a lot of extra work because these branches are overlapping and the perspective doesn't always make sense. But instead you can just decrease the number of branches, as long as you're making sure that everything is somewhat connected. It doesn't have to be perfect, but at least when you get to a point and you feel like, yeah, this could hold together, then about that time you can just stop and be done with your work. Now there are also different options as to when to add the wood part of the tree. For example, you could have started from the very beginning with the trunk and all the branches. Or you start with those leaves that are going to end up in the background, then with the wood part and then with the foreground leaves. All of these methods have their pros and cons. As for this method here, we were able to paint in the needles freely however we wanted and then had to adjust the branches accordingly. If you do it the other way around, you have much more freedom for your branches, however, much less for your leaves. You have to make them grow on top of these branches after all. So it comes down to personal preference. Next up we want to add some light to these wood parts. So I have here this kind of orange, also additionally more of a grayish orange, and we just paint over it, like so. I'm using again the same brush because the bark has a very rough texture and so this one is very good for achieving this effect. Now at this part we can make decisions as to where these branches are growing. Let's take a closer look at this one for example. If you want to have this branch grow to the background, away from the viewer, then what we do is we just simply cut it off in a way by continuing these lighter areas. If you want to pull it to the foreground, what you need to do is you kind of fade out these lighter areas towards the branch and have the shadowy part cut into the trunk, as to say. Now this branch is definitely in the background since the trunk is right in front of these leaves, but let's pretend it could also grow to the foreground. So what you need to do is you need to let the light cut into the trunk, like so. And if it's going to be in the background, well, it just stays shadowy as it is, and maybe has here further at the back some lighter areas. And we want to drop in some bright yellow for the brightest areas on top of that trunk and the branches. Make sure to mix it together to have some kind of smooth transition, while also retaining the texture, the rough texture. And so in the end, it can look something like this. Again, in the prepared version it looks so much better. And the last thing I want to do is, I take a very solid brush, and drop in some little broken off branches here and there. Here on the shadow side I want to use the darkest color, the dark brown. And just vary the size of these branches also quite a lot. On the other side we have a slightly brighter color, like so. And you just drop them wherever you want. Don't completely overdo it of course, otherwise it becomes a bit too much. And also let them grow from the front of the bark not just straight up from the side and like draw right into it, like so. Then go ahead and drop in some little spots that indicate where there ha might have been some branches which completely broke off and this gives the tree also some extra little detail. And so we have our final pine tree. You might not understand why it is so much fun for me to paint these, because you have so much freedom and I just like the general shape of these trees. Well, I'm not completely done. I have another painting of which I can show the making of process. Another pine tree, but in a different shape and also in winter. So while you're watching this time lapse, I'm going to tell you a bunch of interesting facts about pine trees. So let's go! There are about 120 different pine tree species, which grow mostly in temperate and subtropical climate zones. They reproduce by having their male flowers, which appear as little cones grouped together in clusters, produce the pollen, 
which is carried by the wind and insects to the female flowers. When pollinated, they grow into big cones and eventually spread out, scattering their winged seeds. Some pine trees have quite large seeds, called pine nuts. Mmm, tasty. Their needles are especially fascinating. Because of their shape, snow slides off very easily, preventing the branches from breaking due to the heavy weight. Also, because of their needle shape, the number of pores is reduced and therefore they evaporate way less water. Also, the surface is coated with cotton, which additionally prevents the water from evaporating. And this waxy coating has this extra bonus of preventing the cells from freezing during very cold winters. I find this information about the needles fascinating and really cool. Alright, now let's take a look. You can see that I made it much pointier. And also the distance between the lowest leaf clusters and the ground is significantly larger. However, the trunk could be even taller than that. And also the density could be much higher. But this is what I went for. And for the winter version, the color palette has changed especially for the leaves because now we don't really have the greens and the yellows but it has been exchanged we have at first a very dark blue green which is not super strongly saturated and then we move on to a gray blue and then just straight up light gray and white and now it's your turn to paint beautiful looking pine trees so thank you so much for watching i really hope that this video was helpful to you and as always, if you have any questions or constructive feedback, then please leave a comment down below. And if you want more information and links, then please check out the description of this video. Alright then, have fun drawing. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs>